Scientific Method brings us back to early Season 4, which means that Seven's only been part of the crew for half a dozen episodes, and the Paris Torres relationship has been official for even less time than that. But of course, the constant fear of a horrible death that life on Voyager brings is as old as the series itself, and will continue long past those few survivors get home and relive it like Vietnam vets plagued by night sweats. Because this is so early on for her, Seven's voice is often much softer than it would be known for. She seems to still be getting a feel for the part. Um, Jerry Ryan seemed to be treating Seven as socially, like a child in an adult's body. Bold interactions, like just deciding to come down here and reroute stuff for astrometrics without asking anybody first, but almost meek in her tone when having to deal with others. Shockingly, in one of the rare moments when Torres has an actual reason to get in Seven's face over what she's doing, because this thing has screwed up their work down in engineering all morning, she's a lot less hostile than she would often get over trivial things later on, and is actually downright nice to Seven. If I could adjust to Starfleet life, so can you. Uh, I don't know. Supportive, empathetic, stern but not hostile... This just isn't Torres. There must be some kind of alien influence at work here. Or, okay, perhaps she's just in a really good mood. Are those supposed to make up for canceling on me last night? Of course she's not, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking there. So I guess that just leaves alien influence to explain it. Ah, yep, there you go. Ah, Should have gone with the obvious answer right away. What is that? feeling that somebody was watching us. For the last time, Harry, zip up and leave us alone. After the titles, we see that Janeway's not doing well. She's extremely tense and not exactly mad. She just gets these headaches. The doctor says she's like this because of her micromanaging, which obviously is not true, and it's completely coincidental that her treatments are interrupted because she simply must come to the bridge because they found a rare astronomical phenomenon and need her permission to go look at it. Meanwhile, Torres and Perez meet in engineering for the world's most fake conversation in order to get to the upper levels of engineering so they can start making out in the most brazen display of the abuse of power since, well, Janeway made Harry be her human footstool for the day. Tuvok interrupts to turn in a report, so Tom chases him down in the hopes of getting him to keep what he saw to himself, but Tuvok is evasive and mildly exasperated, which is no doubt inconvenient for him since he usually has to save that up for when he's in the mess hall. Paris and Torres discuss how to handle this, and having to go into the magic meeting room. I just thought we wanted to keep this relationship to ourselves. So that's why you were practically humping in the largest room on the ship that doesn't have shuttles in it. They sort that out just in time for this important meeting, and if you thought this room was reserved just for sorting out whatever stupid crisis they blundered into, nope! Jacote wants to lay out a plan for studying the pair of pulsars to make sure that they don't screw up in their task of looking at it for science. Alas, Paris and Torres have to stay after school, though. Janeway wants to talk about the problems they seem to be having. And for once, she and I are in total agreement. Whatever your personal lives are, you have to remember that when you're on the job, you're not, well, on the job. On the long list of things that would qualify you to become a commissioned officer, I've, I've just got to believe that somewhere on there is managing an entire shift while keeping my pants on. Meanwhile, Chakotay is pulling a late-nighter and goes to get some coffee when he gets a visit from the I can see inside you fairy, which sends some twinkle dust into his neck and makes him a freak, and soon his hair is falling out at the touch. Sir Chakotay is suffering bone decalcification, tissue necrosis, decreased visual acuity, all classic signs of aging. Let that be a lesson to you. Coffee is the beverage of captains, Methuselah. Yes, this looks bad. Can you at least give me my hair back? Obviously, that's beyond medical science. With no idea what's going on, they figure anomaly of the week. So maybe check out those binary pulsars to see if they could have done something like this. In the meantime, Chakotay has to stay here, which has upset some that it's ageism. But I think it's more a case of, there's something obviously wrong with you. We should make sure it doesn't get worse. Ism. Meanwhile, Harry learns about Tom's meeting with Janeway. Under orders to use better judgment? Oh, that's pretty harsh. Considering Harry will get a formal reprimand for sleeping with someone, I'd say he's got every right to be sarcastic over Janeway's punishment of others. Neelix interrupts by collapsing and convulsing. Oh dear, he may have allowed some of his cooking to come in contact with his skin. Big mistake. Like Chakotay, this is another case of genetic tampering, and of course, once you tamper with it, you can't return it. 
Neelix now has the characters of a Mylian. He had one as an ancestor, and hey, at least it's not part spider, right? Although he's starting to stink now, so with nothing else to do, he and Chakotay sit down to grumble about who has it worse. And the answer is obviously Chakotay, because even though they both have equally bad problems to deal with, Chakotay also has to share a room with Neelix, so obviously he wins. Well, to show Neelix's thought processes, more people show up. Lieutenant, can we help? And after just bitching that you can't do anything. Normally it's the thought that counts, but with Neelix, thought rarely comes into it. The doctor's not here. He and Torres are looking through the super microscope to look at the tissue samples. That's why Tom is in sickbay treating patients, because the doctor can be of more use here. And the last thing they need is Tom and Torres contaminating the samples while she demands he give her a diagnostic. Anyway, he zooms in on Chakotay's DNA, and of course, it's little interconnected balls, which we normally have to hand wave away as a simplistic representation of DNA. Except this time, they're doing one better. Not only is DNA made up of little balls, but someone has stamped an alien barcode on one. If that doesn't sound silly to you, that's basically like trying to permanently draw a picture on a cloud. As they try to investigate, the doctor is deleted and Taurus collapses into unconsciousness, and the mutations around the ship start getting worse. If this isn't an alien invader, then it is the weirdest anomaly yet. Anything worse, then they're going to wind up turning into balloon animals or something. Well, it seems reports of the doctor's deletion were premature. He's been hiding in the Da Vinci simulation. But don't quibble with me, that's what they call it. And he contacts Seven through her Borg implants, beginning a four-year-long trend of using that to save the day. To up the ante, he uses this hot glue gun on her eyepiece so that she can see things that are in a 1.5 phase variance, because, of course, that's the state of reality that always harbors the most dickish aliens. A little behind-the-scenes stuff. Apparently, Jerry Ryan goosed Picardo like five times or so during this scene because she was happy not being the only one in skin-tight bottoms for once. And speaking of bad touching, Seven quickly sees that there are aliens about hooking up stuff to the crew. They can't be seen or felt because they're out of phase, but they still interact because science. Meanwhile, Janeway is on her last nerve, which, as you can imagine, is bad for the crew. Good morning, Captain. That's a matter of opinion. What is it? You should eat Tuvok. But, well, you've never steered me wrong, shoulder cowboy. Okie dokie. It seems to me that people have been getting a little too comfortable around here lately. I want them to remember that they're trapped in a personal hell with me as the only possible guide out. If they're comfortable, well, next thing you know, it'll be mutiny. The list of crimes is severe, like ticking mess hall privileges outside designated hours, spending excess time on the holodeck. Why, it's almost as if they were looking for some small comfort to escape the endless journey she's condemned them to. Selfish jerks. Something must be done about this. Shall I flog them as well? No, just Harry. That'll make the rest learn. He is the whipping boy, after all. Might as well just make it literal. Seven shows up to report what's happening, but on seeing two of the aliens present having drilled several taps into Janeway's head to drain out the crazy, she figures she better not tip their hand just yet, so she keeps silent and reports back to the doctor that it looks like they're being experimented on. In the turbo lift, one of them probed me with a medical instrument. And so, in response to being probed, Seven plans to shoot them with a modified phaser blast, which should make the aliens visible and has the added bonus of getting to shoot them. But if they retaliated, they could mutate the crew to death. So instead, they should use a special shock that will neutralize the tags with the downside that it will hurt like a son of a bitch. To do that, Seven will need to violate safety protocols. And remember, this is not only a half dozen episodes after she joined the crew under less than ideal circumstances. It's just last week that she went crazy, and after dicking with the crew, she blasted her way out in a shuttle and managed to take Tuvok prisoner. So there's still a little mistrust there. Plus, with Janeway in this mood, erring on the side of caution is best for anybody who doesn't want a flogging. So Tuvok interferes, leaving Seven no choice but to shoot the alien for Operation Booyah! The alien is tossed in a cell, and Janeway obviously wants some answers. They're experimenting on her crew, and nobody does that without cutting Janeway a royalty check. The alien explains that this is how they perform medical research, and seems surprised that Janeway wouldn't be more supportive of that, because they are terribly written villains. While this attempt to explain why she feels justified is handled satisfactorily, thinking that Janeway would therefore go along with that is just stupid. Because this is a message show, and of course the message must be screamed because this is Voyager and they know no other way to do it. It's the exploitation of another species for your own benefit. 
My people decided a long time ago that that was unacceptable. Because this must be an allegory for animal experimentation, instead of pointing out that this is dealing with another sapient being. Because, of course, there has never been a case of sapient beings experimenting on other sapient beings, has there? Unless you count Nazi Germany on people in concentration camps, Japan's Unit 731 with prisoners, 19th century America on slaves, the Tuskegee experiment, etc. And ironically, none of those would be applicable to Janeway's objections since they're not a different species. So, hey, Mengele was bad, but at least he didn't work on rats. I'm sure that sentence will never be taken out of context. I'm not going to rant like last week because I suppose they're being honest in their this is why we're beating the message into you thing. And because animal experimentation has a large number of positions. It's not a binary thing. It's not even running a maze is cruel. Or, hey, let's poke these baby chimps in the eyes with needles. I don't care if we learn anything from it. Whatever your political or moral stance is over animals, this kind of speech or episode will never be persuasive to anybody who disagrees because not everyone sees animals and people as being morally equivalent. Any more than in Doctor Who's Seeds of Doom that people and plants were morally equivalent to the villain. To further show how badly written these villains are, in the face of Janeway's speech, she starts pointlessly talking about the experiments on Janeway personally, including debating how long they think it'll be until she snaps. I'm not surprised they consider it a matter of when and not if. I've certainly not thought otherwise. Without a way to stop the aliens from manipulating their DNA to lethal levels, though, all Janeway can do at the moment is get mad. Although that happens when the doctor is called to the first fatality. Her blood pressure is 360 over 125. How is that possible? Well, this is either the aliens or Neelix has been making deep-fried butter with mayo dipping sauce again. Janeway decides to emulate Picard's decision in Where Silence Has Lease, except instead of setting the self-destruct and giving the crew time to prepare for the end, she grabs the wheel and flies towards the binary pulsars. Because if I'm going down with a ship, I'm going to make James Dean look like a little old lady on her way to church. So they plunge in there and the shields drop, and given that earlier there was concern about whether or not the shields could stop gamma rays from way far out, the fact that there are no shields at all, well, that's kind of a thing for concern. Now, of course, at the moment, they're worried about the buckling and the temperatures, but nobody seems to make the slightest comment about the gamma ray issue, which, you know, hey, worst comes to worst, it's only going to mess with their DNA, right? Obviously, that's not a concern in this week's episode. This insanity has driven the aliens off, so when they survive, none the worse for wear, ho-hum, another brush with near death, the doctor is able to restore everyone to normal. Then we have what could either be a coda, or the series has become confused and just decided to start the next episode, because the scene really lacks the pacing and relevance you'd expect from the end of the episode, like it ran long so they had to draw it out. Which, hey, at least it's not technobabble time-killing like it often is. Torres and Tom are having a dinner date and keep getting interrupted, plus this is a place where Harry can't spy on them. Smells good. Of course, if Torres is in here, then her panty drawer is unguarded, so even Harry will get to have a good evening tonight. And speaking of questionable behavior, they wonder if maybe their behavior was influenced by the aliens. And obviously they don't give a crap either way, which makes three of us. Post-episode follow-up, stupid Neelix moment is turning into a Mylian. I know it's not his fault, but uh, it's as if he wasn't hideous enough. Final score for Scientific Method is 4 out of 10. It's probably the most derivative Voyager episode ever which is kind of funny since it kicks off the seven Borg implant save the day plot. I mean, just off the top of my head, there's night terrors and the sleep deprivation of Janeway, phantasms and the invisible aliens affecting the crew, schisms and the whole being experimented on unawares, genesis and the activating old genes to alter species, and most obviously, where silence has lease, with the lethal experiments plus the dilemma of how one should respond to such a threat. Drawing inspiration from other works is fine, but scientific method is in no way better than the sum of its parts. While there is a bit good stuff with Chakotay and Neelix, or the flog them question, overall the episode falls flat. And no, the message has nothing to do with that, although having to shout it is a sign of how ineptly the episode was put together. But the chemistry between McNeil and Dawson worked, um, well, except for that over-the-top scene in engineering. Incidentally, I couldn't help but notice that McNeil really got into the role because he had to stop himself visibly from grabbing Dawson's breast during the scene. Altogether, this makes it a slightly below average Voyager episode. 
But if you are still interested in medical questions with a twist, well, next week, Dr. Bashir has a case of Physician Heal Thyself with Distant Voices. Bring your own tennis ball.